Recently, one of my good friends and favorite Final Cut Pro creators, Surge, created an incredible tutorial showing how to add a glow effect to pretty much anything inside of Final Cut Pro. And while I was watching that tutorial, it got me thinking, wow, this would be an amazing Apple Motion template. So I reached out to him, asked if it was okay if I made an Apple Motion version, and he was totally cool with it. So in this video, we're gonna create a powerful glow effect for Final Cut Pro using Apple Motion. And at the end, we're gonna add just a bit of a twist to make this more of a smoky glow effect. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this effect and use it in your videos right now. The first thing we wanna do is of course open Apple Motion. Today, we're gonna use the Final Cut effect. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my preset at 1080p for 29.97 on the frame rate and the duration of 10 seconds. The first thing we're gonna need to do is make it so we can actually visibly see the effect being applied. So to do that, let's come on over to our masks and I'm just gonna quickly create a rectangle mask. This mask is not going to stick around so it does not need to be perfect in any way. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and select this layer called Effect Source. With that selected, push K and that's going to create something called a clone layer. Taking this clone layer, I want it outside of the original group that contained our effect source. So I'm just gonna click and drag that out so now it's in its own group. Let's go ahead and rename the first group to be the source group, and then we can rename the second group to be the glow group. Selecting that clone layer, we can go on up to filters, go to blur, and we're gonna select the Gaussian blur. Then jumping on over to the inspector, we can drag up this value, and you can already start to see how it might have a glow. And in fact, if this image had some brighter parts, the glow would look really convincing. But I wanna give us even more control for when we apply this in Final Cut Pro. Firstly, I wanna make it so we can choose what the color of this effect is. So to achieve that, we'll go ahead and go back up to filters, we'll go to stylize, and we're gonna select fill. Now, it looks like not much has changed. That's because our fill color is set to gray. So let's go ahead and select that, and now we can change it over to whatever we want. I'm actually gonna push this over to purple and just bring the brightness up quite a bit like that. So now, whatever we do with this rectangle mask, you'll see how that glow is following, and that's gonna be super helpful over in Final Cut Pro. Next, I wanna take this glow a step further and add a nice inner glow to the object, which we can enable or disable over in Final Cut Pro. So to achieve that, go ahead and select your effect source. We're gonna push K to create one more clone layer, and we're gonna rename that to be inner glow. It's important that this is over the top of our original effect source. Let's go up to filters, go down to border, and then select the stroke filter. So now we've got this nice red stroke. I'm just gonna change this over to white for right now. Now we wanna make it so we can blur this edge without blurring the original effect source. So to achieve that, we'll scroll on down and you'll see there's this hide source option. So if I check that, if I disable the original effect source, you'll see how we just have this outline. From there, we can select our inner glow effect, go up to filters, and we're once again going to apply the Gaussian blur. I'll just drag this up quite a bit. And to make this effect even more convincing, let's go on over into our properties, find the blend mode, and change it from normal over to add. So this is gonna give us a nice subtle glow effect as it's adding it onto our scene. And finally, with our stroke effect, we also need to make sure that the position is set to inside. This is just gonna make the glow happen a little bit more on the interior of our object. But you'll still notice that if I zoom in, this glow is still spilling out to the outer edge. Now you might like how that looks, but if you wanna get rid of that, there's a really quick and easy fix. Selecting our inner glow, let's right click on it and select add image mask. Now all we need to do is just click and drag our effect source onto that image mask and you'll notice that this outer edge is now just affecting wherever our original effect source was. However, Apple Motion by default is going to deselect this effect source, so we just need to re-enable that. So now we have this nice inner glow happening on our clip, and if we go to the stroke settings, we can change this to whatever color we like. So to make it so we can change this in Final Cut Pro, I'm gonna go ahead and find the color and we will publish that. Additionally, I'm going to publish this Gaussian blur amount. Additionally, let's go on down to the other clone layer. We can publish the opacity on this. We can go into the fill settings. We could publish the color. And if you wanted to get really crazy, you could change this over to a gradient. So we could even publish that attribute and if we wanted to make it so we had full control over this gradient in Final Cut Pro, we can just right click on that gradient and push publish. And so now we have that control as well. 
And finally, we want to make it so we can choose how much of this Gaussian blur is happening. So let's go ahead and publish that. So now that we've published all of these different elements, there's one last element I want to add to this to really take it to the next level to make it have this cool smoky effect. Go on over into your library, go to your generators and locate the clouds generator. Let's just drag this into our glow group for right now. From there, we'll go to the inspector and in here you'll see all the different options we need. One being this speed option. Go ahead and drag that up. And if we watch, you can see how that backdrop is moving a lot faster. Faster. I really like how the fast speed looks, but it's up to you how you want this to look. Additionally, let's come on down to the offset, and I want this smoke to be continually moving upwards. So find your Y offset, we'll right click, and then we'll go to add parameter behavior and select rate. The rate parameter is going to continually add a value to whatever parameter we want in Apple Motion, thus animating it. Let's set our rate to something really small like 0.1. So now you can see it's slowly starting to move up. Maybe that's a little too slow, so let's set it to 0.2, and that's looking pretty nice. Let's go ahead and hide our clouds for right now. Then finding our clone glow layer, we can go on up to filters. We'll go down to distortion and then select bump map. From there, we can drag our clouds in and you'll see how it's already starting to affect that backdrop. Now, all we need to do from here is drag up the amount, maybe change the direction a little bit and publishing that looks really, really cool. Finally, let's go ahead and delete this rectangle mask and everything is going to go back to how it was originally, but those changes still apply. From there, we'll push Command S to save or to publish to Final Cut Pro and I'll just call it Smoky Glow. From there, we can go into our categories. I'm gonna throw this into my tutorials category and push publish. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring in this Final Cut Pro logo and we can drag in our Smoky Glow. And just like that, you can see how it has this really cool glow effect to it. It's almost kind of like fire. We can change the color of that glow as much as we want. We can bring down the mix. So now it's matching the Final Cut Pro logo. And you'll also notice that there's this inner purple glow, which we can affect as much as we want. So I could change it to be blue or yellow. It's really up to you how you want these different things to work. And you can of course adjust the opacity. Again, if you're a patron, you can download this effect and use it in your videos right now. Massive thank you to Surge for inspiring me to make this tutorial. And if this was interesting to you, you might want to check out this video where I've created a powerful free plugin for Final Cut Pro called Saber that uses a lot of these different elements to make an amazing plugin for you. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.